Today, around me, springtime is opening up. The sun is shining. The beautiful flowers of spring are behind me. The daffodils, the birds are coming back. This is all a sign of new life. And this new life makes me think of the beautiful feast of Easter. It's the time when we say that Jesus rose from the dead. Many people can ask themselves, what does it mean to say Jesus rose from the dead? The rising of Jesus is only a part of an event that took place, otherwise known as the Passover, when Jesus as a human man on earth came to the end of his life and was made to suffer, die on the cross, and people thought that was the end of him, but in fact it wasn't. He passed over from life through suffering into new life. I love the way the Easter stories tell us about the resurrection of Jesus. One of the remarkable things is that none of them actually describes the moment. But I do love the way they tell us that when the woman, Mary, who went to the tomb to look for Jesus, she was so filled with love for him, even though she knew he was dead and buried. She was wondering who was going to roll away the stone for her so that she could anoint him again with the precious oils. But to her amazement and to her fright, the stone blocking the grave was taken away. And she looked in and there was no body. And then she went away and she found a man, a gardener there. And then that man called her by her name. And the way he said that struck a chord in her. And she understood in a very deep and special way that this was not a gardener. This was the new Jesus. What I find so beautiful about that story is the fact that the new Jesus was not appearing or looking like the old earthly Jesus. The new Jesus had a totally new appearance, but it was still him who recognized and knew his friends. The same episode happened in the most beautiful way too in the story of the two young men going back from Jerusalem on Easter evening to their home in Emmaus. The two young men filled with disappointment, with disillusionment, and yet utter bafflement because suddenly there are rumors going around in Jerusalem which they have just left saying, He is alive. How can it be? And so they're talking and arguing all the way home when suddenly there's another man beside them. And he's curious to know what they're talking about. And these two, of course, they're amazed. Of all the people in Jerusalem, he hasn't a clue what has happened there today or during the last few days. And so, strangely, he then begins to tell them all that was foretold in the Word of God. They invited the stranger into their house for a meal. And when they sat down together, he did something extraordinary. He took bread, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And immediately, we are told, their eyes were opened and they recognized it was him, the Lord. They didn't recognize anymore the Jesus who lived on earth. It was a transformed Jesus, a risen Jesus. And so these stories give me tremendous hope, tremendous encouragement. When it's hard to believe that Jesus Christ is risen, when it is hard to believe that I too am called to pass over from this ordinary life to another life, I must become like Mary and like the disciples on the road to Emmaus. I too must want 
to meet him, and I must be ready to welcome him into my house to spend time with me.